Hey, this is Ema with Next Wave STEM, and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up your Ender 2 Pro printer. Let's unpack and organize all of our parts. I've taken out all of the contents. Let's quickly go over all of the printer parts and included tools. We have the printer base, which comes attached to the XZ axis kit. We have a handle, the screen kit, the material rack, and material tube, which will hold our filament, and a power cord. We have some sample filament and pliers. The pliers will be useful for cutting the filament. We can set both of these aside as we will not be needing them until we have finished building the printer and are ready to load the filament. For tools, we have a pack of wrenches and screwdrivers. We have several packs of screws. On each pack, there is a label identifying the type of screw. For this reason, I highly suggest you do not open the packs until you reach the step in which they are needed. We have two M416 screws two M545 screws, one M5 by 40 screw, and two M5 by 14 screws. We have a storage card and card reader. Lastly, we have some spare parts and a needle. These can be put away as we will not be using them. I suggest creating a storage kit with the spare parts and tools you need to fix the printer. As the SD card and reader are easy to lose, I also like to keep these in the storage kit. Step one, we will be attaching the XZ axis to the base. We will need the M416 and M545 screws. Let's place the base so this red knob is facing forward. The XZ axis will be mounted on the left. This QR code will be facing forward. As you can see, there are two holes here. These two holes will align with these two holes down here. We will be lining these up and using the M16 screws here and here. Now that we have secured the XZ axis from here, we need to flip the ender onto its side and you will find these two holes here. This is where we will be using the M45 screws with the washers to secure the XZ axis from the bottom. Make sure that both screws are tight. If I rotate the ender to you can see that these cords do not have much give. Make sure this is not twisted around the XZ axis after you've mounted it. Next, we will install the filament spool holder. We're first going to need the material rack and the M40 screw. This is going to attach to the left side of the printer. You'll have to insert this here. It might be a tight squeeze, but it does fit. Make sure that the holes are aligned so that you can take the M40 screw and tighten it there. Next, we will take the spool holder and fix the threaded end into the rack. The spool goes facing the back of the printer. Next, we are going to attach our handle up here. We are going to need our two M14 screws. The orientation of the handle is going to go such that this square protrusion is facing to the back. Our two screws are going to go into these two holes. You will notice that there are two holes at the top of the handle. This is to make it easier for you to tighten your screws. Now we are going to connect our cables. This part can go a lot more smoothly if you follow along with the manual. Let's rotate our ender around. You will see that each of the cables has a yellow tag identifying it. Let's start by connecting our Z-axis motor port and Z-axis limit switch here and here. You will see that both of these cables are labeled Z. One is six-pronged and one is three-pronged. The six-pronged wire connects to the Z-axis motor here. You should be able to just push it in. The three-pronged wire connects to the Z-axis switch Next, we will take the wire labeled E and connect it here. The final two cables we need to connect are both labeled X. You will notice again that one is six pronged and one is three pronged. The six pronged one is going to connect right under here. The three pronged one is going to connect in here. Before we move on, I like to make sure that the wires that come pre-connected by the manufacturer 
are actually connected. You will find these two wires here, labeled Y. Follow them and make sure that they are connected into their ports. Here, I would like to point out the voltage switch. Make sure that it is set at 115 volts. I like to use a wrench to flip the switch. Now we will connect the power cable. If the printer is facing forward, the cable will connect to the right side of the printer. There is an on and off switch right here. And then the port behind it, this is where we will connect our cable. Finally, we are going to mount our display. The display mounts to the left side of the printer. Here you will find rainbow colored wires taped to the base. We can untape these now. These wires are going to connect to the back of the display here. Now we will attach the display to the printer by connecting these prongs to the two side holes right here. They should insert and then slide down. We are now done assembling our printer. Let's make sure all the parts move as they should. The spool holder can rotate. The printer bed should be able to move smoothly back and forth. The x-axis motor should move smoothly and freely along the x-axis. Finally, if I spin the long screw on the back of the z-axis, I should be able to move the extruder down towards the plate. If any of the parts are getting jammed or not moving smoothly, please take a look at the manual and use the wrench to loosen any of the bolts here and here. And there you have it, your 3D printer should now be set up. Thanks for following along and I will see you in the next tutorial where we will learn how to load the filament and level the printer bed.